Hello everyone, this is the Bovine Terror, and today we will be playing Subnautica. Now, today, what we're going to be doing is... We are going to be getting in the Seamoth, and we are going to go to... Wait, no we're not. I just realized there was one more thing that I didn't read in this. Yeah, it was the Bulbo Tree. I, I, I apologize. I did forget to read this, so I'll read it now. Uh, so, Bulbo Tree. A bulb-based flora which roots to the ground and sprouts turquoise leaves. Analysis suggests the sap produced by this plant is poisonous to insects, but can be harvested and consumed by humans for its high water content. Assessment, edible, high water content. Now, interesting thing about this, I've never seen insects in this game. And they included something as small as the rock grub, but they didn't include insects. I mean, there are no insects on land. I've been looking around, and I have not seen any. So, it's interesting that this sap here is poisonous to insects. Why is that? Are the insects all extinct? I mean, is that something that happened? Is that why this... I, I mean, what if it is? I mean, because I haven't seen any insects, and there's never been a mention of insects anywhere. Maybe we'll go, when we go to the other island, we can do that. And it's possible that the developers just didn't put them in the game, um, and it's implied that they're here. But they put in a rock grub, and the rock grub is tiny, which makes me think that there aren't insects here anymore. The only flying creatures that are left are seed-based. If there were insects, I find it almost, ex I find it extraordinarily unlikely that there wouldn't be animals flying around and eating those insects. I just don't think that's really possible. So, yeah. That's what I, that's, I'm guessing that there probably aren't insects anymore, but there used to be. And the insects are extinct. Or at least the ones on these islands are extinct. And there aren't aquatic ones. Which is what I'm thinking. Which is really cool. So, yeah. Anyway. Those are the bulbo trees. They're really cool looking. I like them. Also, it's annoying that there's most of these plants you can't scan. I Most of these, all these plants and the grasses and things like that, you can't scan any of it. You can only scan the bulbo trees. And I forgot another thing that I didn't read last time. <laughs> Pink cap. A land-based fungus species with harvestable spores. Inedible. Which, thanks. Very little information, but oh well. Uh, spec... Uh, spec oh, it's speckled rattler, not a spectacle. Speckled rattler. A brittle land plant containing large spores which generate a characteristic rattle when the plant is shaken. This may act to ward off predators or even encourage predation as a means of spreading the spores. Also, it's interesting because it says this may act to ward off predators or even encourage predation as a means of spreading the spores. Here's the thing. There aren't any land-based animals here. Other than them. And they eat seeds. They're not going to eat the spores of that plant. They're just not going to. They're going to eat seeds. Which is really interesting. Because I think the only things you could really eat that might have seeds would be like the bulbo trees. And, I mean, just going off what these kind of look like. They look kind of fern-y. Maybe a palm or something like that. If they're a palm, then there are seeds that they could eat off. But if it's a fern, there's not. Because they, they use spores as well. Which means it's the only food they can eat on this island is the only thing they can have, these bulbo tree seeds. It's entirely po- Whoa, I didn't know you could come up here. Huh. Well, it's entirely possible that's the case. Which would be interesting. So, yeah. Anyway. Just something to think about. This uh, mass extinction really has some interesting implications. There aren't any insects. It probably killed off any bird-like creatures, like the sky rays, that would have eaten insects. Probably killed off land-based animals. And then land-based animals, you know, the, that thing wanted predators to spread its spores or ward off predators. There are no plant-eating animals on land anymore. Which means they're probably gone. So either those mushrooms, or either those, uh, what are they? They're not mushrooms. The, the, yeah, either the... Rattlers are going to have a great time because nothing's eating them, or they're all going to die because nothing is spreading them around anymore. Which is really interesting. So, what we're going to do... Oh, I hit my head on that. Okay, we're going to get in the sea moth. Ah, okay. 
So we're gonna get in the steam off and we're gonna look around because, um, and I know that there are reapers here, so we gotta be really careful about that. Um, but I wanna look around at this because it's cool. Uh, ooh, oh, hey, buddy. Uh, Boone Shark. Uh, so I want to look around at this, and one thing I really wanted to find, yes, I wanted to try, okay, so there's a whole underwater cave system further in there, uh, there's, a, there's just something out there I wanted to check, um, there is, what the, what the, what the, oh, dangerous it is to go after the warpers um, without anything oh I think he left but uh, okay wow hey buddy why did you do that are you dead you looked at you just rammed yourself into me and killed yourself why would you do something like that okay but maybe we can try to scan one of them get behind it and so it doesn't teleport us hopefully hopefully uh, come on come on come on come on come on come on okay 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 I'm leaving I'm leaving you alone goodbye oh <gasps> don't do that what are you oh you're one of those guys you're not anything really where'd you go I don't know where it went! I'm scared now! Okay. <gasps> no, 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 go away. There's a creature egg here, I don't know. Ah! <laughs> Fish, stop trying to eat me! I just want this! You're in it, I crystal. Scan, scan, scan. Okay, scan! <laughs> it's trying to teleport me! Stop doing that! Okay, uh, I gotta clean up my inventory before it eats me. So let's uh, let's jump back in the sea moth and turn around promptly and go back in here, and then I will go get that uraninite crystal because it seems useful. Ooh, a gel sack. Oh yeah, we collected one of these. Do I need that for some reason? Where's the sea moth? There it is. I don't know if I need that. Let, okay, let's get in here and read about those really fast before we forget about them. Magnetite, or yeah, magnetite. Magnetite is an iron oxide valued for its magnetic potential amongst other qualities. It is used in many Federation technologies, including sonar and torpedo systems. Okay, how come there's some of these that you can scan, but others you can't? Uraninite is a naturally occurring uranium oxide. Highly radioactive and unstable, its primary use is in the production of uranium reactor rods for nuclear generators. Cool. Alright, indigenous life forms. Fauna, carnivores, warper. Are they carnivores? Uh, warper, an aggressive creature with the ability to teleport itself and others in space. No genetic crossover identified with indigenous life forms. Demonstrates no recognized defensive behavior. Head. Mechanisms located in the head region provide its warping capability, which it uses to stalk its targets. Torso. Appears to hunt other life forms, but no digestive organs have been identified. Internal structure considerably more complex than other known organisms. Unable to distinguish whether organic or artificial in nature. Which, they are. They're like part organic and part artificial. They're kind of cyborgs which is pretty cool. I don't remember exactly what the other portion of them is made of, though. I'll have to kind of figure that out and then see what their living portion is like for our evolutionary diagram. So, gel sac. These organic structures grow on cave walls. The purple sacs, which arise from the surface, 
uh, contain a low-density gel laced with spores. These burst from time to time, floating toward the surface and attaching onto the next rock face they encounter. Hmm. While the gel sac is edible, its low density renders it an invaluable advanced construction material. Aerogel construction applications. Ah. Well. Whoa. Uh, okay. I would like this. Hi, Warper. I hope you don't see me. You might, though. So, I'm gonna get rid of this lithium, pick up this gel sack, and get back in the sea <gasps> Oh god, you sound really close. I'm gonna just keep driving this way. Where did you go? I don't like you guys. I mean, I do because you're really cool, but you're terrifying. Erosion patterns on the land masses suspended here suggest they once floated on the surface. Oh, cool, okay. Alright, I'm gonna jump out and see if there's anything to scan here. Ooh, earth and coral tubes. I hear a thing growling at me. There's a thing trying to eat me as well. What is this? Shale? I don't need that. Uh, okay. Just avoid the bone sharks. Don't let them eat me. Hi, buddy. You guys are really busy. Ah! Okay, okay, okay. Oh my god, they're big. I kind of forgot how big they are. Alright, you guys aren't going to eat me, right? I can't go that deep. Okay, let's not go that deep. Let's go this way. You guys broke my seam off again. Why do you guys keep doing that? The giant floaters! Did I not think to try to scan the giant floaters? <sighs> okay, let's scan the, the giant. Ancient floater. Don't eat me, please. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a scientist. I'm just here to study. This, the natural world and the, the stuff that's here, okay? I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I'm not here to hurt you guys. I just wanna look around. That's all I wanna do, okay? Just... Please don't eat me. I don't wanna, I don't wanna do that, okay? I just wanna look at the things that are here. That's all I wanna do. There's a piece of your mirror right there. Hey, you should, uh, you should fuck off so I can get back to my, to my... Ah! Why are you breaking this? Stop breaking it! Why did you bite this while I was gone? Okay, you know what's really frustrating? See how beautiful these are? <gasps> Wait a second, you can! Oh, okay, there was a different plant that looked a lot like this that you couldn't scan. And I was like, isn't this annoying? Aren't these cool looking? I don't know why you can't scan them, but you can. But I can scan those guys, so cool! There was a different plant that kind of looked like that, that I couldn't scan. Oh, yeah, those guys down there. Look, you can't scan... These guys. What? Why can't you? That's so dumb. Anyway. I recall. We'll read that in a sec. Yeah, yeah, the tree leeches. So they were in here, but they're just on rock. Which is kind of weird. But may maybe there's just the coral that's on there? I don't know. Anyway, let's read about these guys. Spotted dock leaf. A simple aquatic plant. Chemicals within the leaves act to neutralize poisons and acids found in other local specimens. Thereby act actively encouraging predation by herbivores. This ensures the plant both spreads its seed, but retains enough surface area on its leaves to survive itself. That's really cool. That's cool. I like that one. Okay. Okay. I'm cool with that. Alright, coral. Earthen coral tubes. Genetic resemblances to the giant coral tubes. Cool. Encountered elsewhere suggests evolutionary divergence approximately a hundred thousand years ago with this subspecies being Substantially lower in calcium content and specializing in growing in smaller denser packs at deeper levels Assessment no practical application discovered now this is interesting because it says that with this subspecies uh, if There was divergence a hundred thousand years ago, and it's still a subspecies um, Well, that's actually not that weird never mind that's actually, that's really not that weird, actually. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind what I was going to say about that. But, um, so that's cool. This just flat out tells you, like, this is a subspecies of the giant coral tubes, which is really cool. Interesting. That's really cool. Okay. 
Well, that, that just gives us really, really good information for what we're trying to do. So, with the with the uh, evolutionary uh, tree, which is really cool. All right, ancient floater. Biodata suggests these vast floaters have matured in an ingenious symbiosis with the land they have attached to. The attached landmass is raised in the water, increasing sunlight and encouraging plant growth. As older plants decay, organic residues and nutrients seep into the rock and are consumed by the floater. These circumstances must have held for thousands of years for a floater to reach this size. That is so cool. Life cycle. Immature floaters are born near the surface, from where they sink to the seabed, attaching to any stable surface they find on the way. Those individuals fortunate enough to attach to a, di to a digestible nutrient source will grow in size, thus increasing their buoyancy and drawing whatever they are attached closer to the surface. In extreme circumstances, a number of floaters may attach to a leviathan-class life form, forcing it to the surface and, effect and effectively asphyxiating it. The body will be consumed over a number of months until eventually dissolving, leaving the floaters free to attach to a new host. Those creatures which successfully raise a landmass to the surface are rewarded with a burge, burgeoning, a burgeon, uh, I don't know why I can't say that word, burgeon, I don't know, burgeon, burgeoning, that's not how you say that, burgeon, burgeon, I don't know how to say that, just skip that word, uh, and permanent food supply, allowing them finally to reproduce and begin the cycle again. That is so goddamn cool. That is so cool. They have suction cups on them. I mean, that makes sense, but that's so cool. Wait, okay, little floaters. Does it talk about that? That is so cool. That is so cool. I love that. I love that so much. That is one of the coolest things that I've read so far in Subnautica. Without a doubt. That is so cool. That's so cool! You guys aren't the precursory floaters, right? There's no way. I don't think so. You guys kind of look similar, but I don't think you're the same. That's interesting because that this is another thing. This is a cave system. And there are a bunch of plants in here that are designed for herbivores to eat them for seed dispersal. Where are the herbivores down here? There aren't any herbivores down here. Now, here's the thing. Those plants that were that need herbivores to disperse seeds, there are no herbivores in here. I think I've seen a single peeper in here, and that's all. Ooh. Hold on. What are you? There we go. Spiked horn grass. Cool. Something new. Buddy, 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 don't bite me. I didn't do anything to you. Look, if I, okay, if I bite, okay, can we just make a deal? If I bite you, then you can bite me. Otherwise, can you please not bite me? Okay, so we still need a door cutter, but now we have that thing, which is cool, and I... What the shit was that? What was that sound? What was that? What was that sound? Hi, why are there so many of you? Oh, a stalker tooth! I can scan it? Cool! Okay, uh, I need to get rid of some stuff of mine. So... What should I get rid of? Um, I don't want to get rid of any more lithium! I guess I could drop the batteries that are dead. No, if I can make a power cell out of those, I don't really want to do that. Let's just drop the lithium. We, we have a lot of lithium, so we can stock our teeth. Cool, cool. All right, well, I got... Whoa, hi there, buddy. Ah, no, the poor hoverfish. Ah, and me, and me, and the poor me. Uh, oh, stalker teeth, okay. Uh, extended analysis of acquired dental samples has been collected. Samples match to species designated stalker. 
Stalker teeth exhibit extraordinarily lightness and strength and contain only trace amounts of calcium. The edges show signs of wear and are studded with metal flakes, providing evidence that the stalkers chew on metal deposits in order to sharpen their teeth. Oh, okay. Applications is a natural substrate in enamel glass fabrication. Cool. Uh, spiked horn grass. While it shares a close genetic similarity with blood grass, this species has evolved to house its root system in rigid, horn-shaped enclosures. Cool. I do believe... Yeah, that's part of the... The Degassi Survivor stuff, who we will find out more about in the next episode. Alright, well, thank you guys for watching, and have a great, great life, everyone.